friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a video that is not necessarily Disney specific and that is prepping your pets for travel. Now what I'm talking about in this video is when you unfortunately have to leave your pets behind. I know for a lot of people, pets are part of your family and my husband and I have had the good fortune to be able to travel quite a bit. However, that also means we unfortunately need to leave our kitty behind. And I am a crazy cat lady whose all of her energies and efforts are devoted to one cat. So she is most certainly like our child. So I have developed quite the system for um, caring for, making sure she is well cared for while we are gone. Now I have read an article, um, I had read an article, have read, I've read an article um, written by a vet regarding what to do with your cat if you are going to be gone. And they said, if you're going to be gone for two weeks or less, it is best to keep them at home rather than put them, <clears throat> excuse me, put them in a kennel or to bring them to somebody else's house. Now, I personally would not bring my kitty into a kennel. Um, she would be terrified if she, it's, it's a completely strange, strange space and there'd be barking dogs and what, it wouldn't go well. I know it wouldn't go well um, just based on her experiences in the kitty hospital when she's been there and she has not eaten a bite, even treats when she was there just because she was so stressed out about the new environment. So I would not do that to her. Um, before I got to that point, I would most certainly bring her to somebody else's house. And again, that is only if it is an extended period of time. Now I've not had to leave her for more than two weeks. So thankfully she's always been able to stay in our home. Um, I know with dogs, obviously that is not as feasible of an option. Um, you, if you're not gonna be there, you kind of need to bring them somewhere else. There, I did learn um, in our area that there is a place called a never, or an organization called a Never Home Alone Pet Sitter where they would come and care for your pet. Um, I saw them at a neighbor's house where, and they have a dog, so they would come like twice a day and walk the dog and take care of it. Uh, the thing with that is they had their advertisement on their car and then they parked the car in the driveway. So it was an advertisement to everybody saying, hey, these people are gone. And then when the car wasn't there, you knew that there was nobody home except this tiny little dog. So I, I kind of questioned that a little bit in terms of safety. I mean, we live in a totally safe area. I wouldn't necessarily worry about that, but that still didn't seem like a smart idea to advertise, just so you know, nobody's home. Um, but that is something that exists. So definitely look into that. Um, maybe if you just have like a day or two that you need, where you need somebody to come and fill in some gaps to help care for your pet. Now, what we do personally, we have, um, because our kitty gets um, she gets soft food and then she has like prescription food and regular hard food. We have somebody come two times a day. <clears throat> now, I would say approximately a month before we find all of the people that we will need, letting them know um, this is when we're going to be leaving. So this will be the first um, day slash time we need you. And then this is the last day slash time we will need you. So we have somebody come in the morning and someone come in the evening. So this last trip, we, were, we left super early in the morning on Saturday and then came back about midday the following Saturday. So the first time we had somebody come was Saturday evening, the day we left, and the last time we had somebody come was Saturday morning, the day we returned. So I get my people, you know, tell them at least a month in advance, hey, we're gonna be gone, is there any way you can help us care for our kitty? And then usually, so it's not so taxing on somebody because it is a lot to ask them, um, to come and help care for your pet. Like I said, we'll have two people so that they're not, they don't feel like they're like living at your house. Um, so once we have our people secured and we've had times where, um, they're like, oh yeah, I can do it. But then I have these couple of days where I can't, and then I'll find somebody else. And we might even have three people that do it and say, okay, can you come on, you know, just Tuesday and Thursday mornings because our morning person can't come those days or whatever. So first we get our people. And next, if it is somebody who has never um, been through this routine with us, we set aside a time, um, maybe like a week ahead of time, so that they can come to our house and we can show them um, how to get in 
or give them a key. If they're using a garage code or a key, um, show them how to get in, give them a tour of our house and show them where everything is and explain in person what they have to do. We also, um, it's a good time to kind of explain any little quirks that they might have to deal with. Like in our case, um, this is how you give her a drink under the sink because she's very particular. Um, or just so you know, um, be careful when you're leaving because she's gonna try and run out the garage door. So here's how you should kind of handle it. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's a good idea. Also to show them where they might like to hide so that they're not paranoid that they're missing or dead, which we have learned um, with our neighbor. So yeah, real quick, it just takes a couple of minutes, but I like to do that about a week ahead of time so that it isn't a super long time before you're, you're going to leave so that they don't remember. And then um, it's not super close to when you're leaving so that you have to worry about packing and okay, now my house is a disaster because I have everything laid out and we're getting ready to leave and now I have to worry about these people coming over too. So I do that about a week ahead of time. So I get the people about a month ahead of time and then somebody comes over about a week ahead of time. And in that time, I make sure to make a schedule saying like, okay, so-and-so is coming over these mornings and so-and-so is coming over these evenings. Then just prior to leaving, I make sure and have um, a list all typed up of what has to happen morning and night and I tape it above where her food is kept in our laundry room. And I also text the appropriate people um, just kind of confirming, okay, these are the days you're on and here's our garage code and et cetera, et cetera. So I actually finally grew a brain and saved the letter that we, the list that we type up that we hang above our food for all the instructions because I was retyping like the same thing every time and it's kind of irritating. But um, I will just kind of give you an abbreviated version. Um, okay, so I say thank you, we appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. In the mornings, I tell them how much food to give her and what kind, because like I said, she has two kinds of hard food. Um, and I have the scoop that we use to feed her hard food in the dishes, and I show them these things when they're here. I say, okay, this bucket is her prescription food, this bucket is her non-prescription food. And um, if she's getting, it's changed over time. If she's getting the same amount of each, it doesn't really matter. I just like explain to them, this is why I have one of each. Um, if the amounts were to differ and they need to know, okay, give her X amount of prescription food, but only X amount of non-prescription food, then I'll label the bin so they don't have to worry about remembering, oh God, am I giving her the wrong kind of food? Um, like I said, the scoops are in there, so they don't have to worry about that at all. So I tell them um, what to feed her, and then I tell them where to feed her. So put this in her dish in the laundry room. And then um, she does a couple of dishes of water as well. So I say, okay, then change the laundry room dish. Then I say on what day they should replace all of her dishes because I don't really want people to have to feel like they have to do dishes at my house, but I also don't want her to have the exact same dish for a week or longer because um, the dish gets gross and then she doesn't want to drink. So I'll say, okay, on these days, please change out the dishes and then I'll tell them where the new ones are kept. And I will also have shown them this as well at some point um, when they were, you know, if they've come through and if they've recently done a house tour, or I will say, I have her extra dishes sitting right on the shelf right by her food. Um, okay, let's see. And then in the evenings, and like I said, because it can be kind of a lot and I don't want somebody to have to spend so much time here, I split up the duties. So then in the evening, I have them feed her again and then I have them change her other water dish or dishes, whatever you have. <clears throat> and then that's when she gets her soft food. So I have it all sectioned out so that they know how much to give her. I just like use a fork and section it into like six sections. So I say, okay, give her a sixth of a can of soft food. And what I do is I set it in the fridge and I kind of clean everything, um, move everything to the side so that it is very obvious, like, okay, this is all that's on this shelf in the side of the fridge. That's obviously her soft food. And then I have, I'll put, you know, a fork in there so they don't have to like start, feel awkward about rummaging through drawers or anything like that. And then I tell them, put that on the dish that's, you know, like right on the floor by the fridge. So again, they've seen this before, but I'm just reminding them. And if you have people like my sister, I specify, do not let her eat on the counter because then she tends to get in that habit and that's wonderful. Um, and then clean the litter box or litter boxes. Um, 
we have two litter boxes, one on this floor and then one downstairs. And I also, when they're doing the house tour, show them where to put the litter and um, everything like that. Because like we have a bench type of thing where she goes in the side and then the litter box, that's where the litter box is. But then when you close it, we have our food and water on top. And then downstairs we have a litter genie. So if somebody's not familiar with that, I just show them all of those things um, ahead of time. And then maybe just remind them in the letter if it's something that you think they might forget. Um, then I always put our phone numbers at the bottom of each letter that I make. Um, uh, I put my husband's phone number and my phone number as well. And that is just in case they happen to not have one or if one of us is not answering, you know, if it's one of my coworkers and they don't have my husband's phone number, then they can see it on there and I'm not answering if they need to get a hold of us. So these are all of the things that I've done. I always um, also make sure to get them some kind of a souvenir from our trip. In the event it is somebody who you think really will not like the souvenir from your trip, I've gotten them something local as well, like um, a gift card to a local restaurant or something like that. But we always make sure to get them something to thank them for helping us. And this has worked out really well for us. It helps to alleviate a lot of the stress that I know can go along with leaving a pet for vacation. It's really fun to go on vacations and travel, but I know it can be stressful, especially if your pet is taking some kind of medication or prescription food, and then you have to worry about how they have to get things at the right time. So this has really worked out well for us. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.